Nonetheless, I think every service that we have should be uh, an opportunity to grow and, and uh, present the gospel and, and be fed. And so I hope that this morning all of us uh, are encouraged to be faithful, to continue on and, and keep going. I'd like to um, kind of camp out on Matthew 25 this morning. I know this is a... Um, I used to say a preparatory service, but I think it's a preparatory service. We're prepare, preparing for communion. And um, so I, I know that typically we make a, at least the mention of 1 Corinthians eleven twenty eight 28, that uh, talks about examining ourselves. And so I think every service is, has an element of that in it. And that's, a, that's okay. That's the way it should be. Um, but I also hope that, that it's not a dark thing, it's something that encourages us to maybe look back and say, okay, I have had some steps that were in a positive direction. So briefly, just look at the uh, parable. There are three parables in the uh, chapter of Matthew 25, and I am kind of focusing on the middle one this morning. I'm actually camping on that one. Uh, the, the one, and I don't think I'm going to, well, I'm not going to read a lot because of time's sake. I'm just kind of going to move in and, and grab some uh, verses out of that. Maybe uh, you can keep your Bible open to that place if you'd like. But this is the time that a man went to a far country. We know the story. We've heard it from little up. Uh, and, and I don't know who of you does this. You're going to go away and you say, okay, here here is my money, here's $500, and I'll give him $500, i will give him $200, and then one will just get $100, and when I come back, I expect you to have more than what I uh, gave you. I haven't done that. I don't know of anyone that has this as a parable, but it does uh, carry with it a lesson, and I think the whole chapter of Matthew 25 <coughs> engages us in thinking about the fact that we, although salvation is a, a gift that's free to us, it does, or it is, there's effort that's required on our end of things in order to um, hear the words of Jesus, well done, at the end of life. And so I, well, let, let me just proceed so we know the story well. He gave the, the money, the talents, and I don't know if it was intentional that Jesus didn't uh, spell out exactly what it was, but he, he not only gave the money, but he gave according to their ability, if you read that. He gave according to their ability, and I think that's a very important thing to say this morning because we dare not find fault with each other because we're all on a different level in our spiritual journey. We're all experiencing things that bring us into this game at, a, at a junctures that we have to give each other grace, otherwise we're going to tear each other apart and kill off what should be. But I think that's very important. So maybe, um, well, let's just, I'm just going to read. I, it's easier for me just to, to read some of it. And I'll just break in verse 18. So the one that, I'm, I'm starting in, the, the guy that got the least, but he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. And after a long time, the Lord of those servants came, cometh. And I don't know if it was like a, a year. We don't know. These are details that we can only imagine. So after a long time, the Lord of these servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. And then the next one that had two, he, he got the same uh, response. And his Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I know thee that thou art a hard man reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap 
Thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not and gather where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then my coming, at my coming I should have received mine own with usury or interest. Take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath, hath shall be given, and he, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So let's back up here and start again at the beginning. And I'd like to, I'm, I'm really going to focus in on kind of one word. If you, would, if you would describe your life, if you would sum up your life and to, uh, up to this point, and you would say, there's one word that kind of describes me and my life, what would it be? And that people do that, and that's, that's okay. I think it's good to have a life word. It's good to have a, a word of the year, something that you kind of focus on to keep you anchored and keep you going, something, especially if you're going to go places, you're going to have to think, think ahead. Some people like to think that they're influential. Some people like to think they're successful. And some, many people just don't actually put it in words. Some people think they're wise. All of those are, are good words to consider. And I think it's important that we, we have a focus or something that we, we uh, have a goal and, and we're working toward and, and it's something that we, we want to, we're, we're moving toward. And I'm, I know I'm, I'm speaking to seasoned Christians this morning and, and I'm not presenting necessarily a, a Roman road how to come to the Lord gospel this morning, but... Uh, Clearly, I think it's, it's clear to all of us that there have been times in our lives and there are times in the lives of those that consider themselves to be seasoned Christians where there was not exactly uh, a, not sure how to put this in word, but there wasn't exactly Christian behavior. In other words, we had this gift from God, we knew the responsibility was there but to our family, our spouse, our neighborhood, our community, our world, we did not necessarily present Christian behavior. And that can be done in so many ways. It can be done when we, we just kind of shrink back and do nothing. It can be when we grab a hold of things that aren't ours to grab a hold of and say things we shouldn't. So many different ways that we, this, this responsibility that God has given us, we fail to to treasure and take care of the way we should. But I'm thinking of one word this morning that, that should, is very focused and should describe Christians, and uh, that is the word faithful. I don't know if this, yeah, it's up there. We, we often, I've read this as many times as you probably have, but that the word faithful should be the goal and the challenge of every Christian believer. And I, I titled this uh, message, or whatever you want to call this speech, uh, God's View of Faithfulness, because I think, in just thinking this through, that, that I have my view of faithfulness, and we have, as human beings, sometimes our view of faithfulness, and what seems to be faithfulness, and I, I'll just admit to you, sometimes it's just low-hanging fruit. Okay, so I handed that tract out, but, oh... Don't ask me to disciple or get my hands dirty beyond that. I, that. I'm faithful because I went that far. Well, that's better than nothing. But I think sometimes we don't push ourselves because we don't understand that God is really pushing us. He's wanting us to, his view of faithfulness is different than perhaps mine is. So God's view of faithfulness is, I think, comes out clearly in this passage. He gave this, and, I, and I'm now, this is a man, that this is a parable, but I think it's, if we put it in shoe leather, we're, we're understanding that God is saying, this is what I'm saying to you. I gave you something. You are to shepherd this. You are to bring this back. And God's view of faithfulness is multiplication, not staying the same. That's what I take out of this. I didn't really see it that way. I, I didn't really... Um, think about it in that in that way but that that man said his lord said well done thou good and faithful servant only to the ones that multiplied not to the ones that just sat on it 
You know, I can, it's easy to, to just sit on something and just kind of hold it there and make sure that it doesn't escape, but um, it, that's not, from this, I would, I would um, understand it to say that God is looking for increase. He's not looking for something that just stays on the level. Craig Rochelle says this, faithfulness honors God and God honors faithfulness. And I, I'm, I'm going to add to that that God honors his version of faithfulness. I, at, at, at the core of this, I want to say that God is not looking for a people that do things just because we've always done it that way. He is looking for people that are actively working and trying to increase the kingdom, actively trying with what they have to, to gain ground. There is so much excitement about becoming a Christian, and I don't want to take away from that. I, I think that is so special, and it's one of the things that I, I treasure probably the most in being in the, on the ministry team is that often I get a front row seat to that. I'm the first one to hear that testimony. Not always, but many times. And I, I treasure that. And I, it's, it, this is completely a rabbit trail and, and off to the side. I, I don't want to minimize that whatsoever. There's a lot of excitement wrapped up in that. And when it goes wrong, it's so heartbreaking. I, uh, my wife had a rather lengthy conversation with another minister's wife who have uh, lost a son to the world. He's alive. They didn't lose him, but he turned his back on God. And because there was struggle in church and everyone was focused on their bickering, they lost this son. And this lady just said, we have to somehow realize that we are impacting far beyond our petty arguments that we often have. It just broke my heart. That was all free. I wasn't planning to say that. But I think sometimes perhaps the best thing we can do for the next generation and for ourselves is simply to focus on being faithful where God has planted us. And I want to talk about, about that. How do Christians that have so such excitement in coming into the kingdom and, and having the gospel uh, being exposed to it and, and teaching and preaching and, and going out and, and singing for people and just living the Christian life, how do we lose sight of the fact that we are to be faithful? And this is, this is something that we do day by day. Faithfulness carries with it the idea that I, it's not a once and done thing. It's something I do over and over and over again. That is a requirement. One of the things that I, that I thought of, and I'm not, this is not a conclusive message at all. You, you, in your mind, you make your own message. You think about it the way you want to think about it. One of the things I've noticed, and I don't even know why this came to my mind, but sometimes people that, that are in the kingdom kind of seem to get bored with where they're at, and they don't stay in their lane. Suddenly they're talking, saying things that really aren't theirs to say. They're moving in directions that they really shouldn't. Um, it is basically expressing discontentment with what God has given me and moving into areas that really I have no business going. And I'll, I'll maybe, ex uh, I'll, just, I'll just throw this out. Be very careful. God has given all of you a neighborhood and a place, a, a stage, and he is watching whether you are making the most of that stage in life and where you are placed. And if we are called to be one thing, but we'd rather be something else just because it suits our fancy, then probably we're going to leave a path of destruction. And I say that something came to mind that really bothers me, um, there, and it, this doesn't just happen when you're sitting in the pew. I heard a ministering brother some years ago say that he, he just kind of was thinking, well, what am I going to do with the rest of my life? As if he didn't have enough to do, I don't know. But, and then he kind of said this kind of struck him that he's going to do this, and I'm not going to go in detail. And it, it, at the moment I thought, well, if God has called you already to a church, to what you're doing, then somehow it doesn't seem right to me that I just say, well, I, 
Okay, I, but I've watched that thing unfold, and sadly, it has not turned out well. And I'm saying it, I'm saying what I am this morning, stay in your lane. If, if we get too far off the side of where we're at, we can just wreak havoc, and, and it has. Stay, I've already said this, but staying the same is not necessarily counted as faithfulness. You know, if I haven't grown, if I haven't matured at all since I came into the kingdom, and what I mean by that, sometimes I think we say these things and we don't explain. If I haven't become kinder, more gracious, more uh, mature in the way I respond to situations, then certainly I have not grown whatsoever. I have not been faithful. So some, just some questions uh, that we can ask, you can ask yourself, and, and this is just a bit of homework for you. Is God's footprint bigger because of where you're at and where you're laboring? And I know that we don't labor to see a kingdom grow. We labor because of obedience. We, have, we are charged with something. We have given, been given something. Sitting in the same pew and doing the same thing that your grandparents did isn't necessarily considered faithfulness, and I'm going to put this in, if you haven't put effort into being faithful. That's so easy, and so, so it happens so much in the church community. It's not wrong to sit in the same pew that your grandparents did, but it is wrong to put no effort in to being faithful. That's what I'm trying to say. And it's the devil's trap. I've always gone to this church. We've, we've always, we've, well, it's good. I appreciate that. At the same time, people get very excited about maybe a new mission without being faithful to, to the one that they've always had and were called to. We can't overlook. It seems to me, I've heard a pastor say that sometimes we need to work at the same problem from both ends at the same time. We don't want to be in this lane where we're so excited about something new that we leave off of what we've been doing, but we can't rust away just doing what we've always done. Now let's just think about some practical areas. Do you express God's love in a kinder way than you did? Do you share your faith in a more able, not angry or critical way than you did? I know this is this next one is one that I, I feel strongly about, and I have not really, I've heard people talk about spiritual disciplines. How many of you have heard people talk about spiritual disciplines? Probably all of you. I'm guessing all of you have. Many of you have. And I know that as soon as we talk about spiritual disciplines, I haven't really heard anyone say, well, what's the point of spiritual disciplines? Well, let me ask you this. Anything you do in life, do you get, the more you do it, do you get better or worse at it? I, I don't really want to take it to like a, playing a sport or something, but that's often where we go. Uh, if we expect to get better at something, we're going to keep doing the reps. You're, you're going to keep doing it. And it, faithfulness carries with it that attitude or idea that we do things over and over and over again, and we get better at it. We don't, we don't just sit back, and, and you, you can't build muscle if you don't exercise. You, it's just it's so simple. It's so basic. And sometimes we forget that we have to, this is something that has to happen over and over and really, truly, at the end of life, and when we are walking in faithfulness, it shows up. The more we pray, the better we get at it. The more we're aware of what needs to be prayed for. And you could go down the list. The, the more we witness to people, the more we, we see the need for it, and the better we get at it. And on and on and on. You could go on and on with that one. But I feel strongly that the spiritual disciplines really show up at the moment of crisis. Those folks that are, are plugged in and connected to God. Faithfulness as God sees it then, I think, has a strong implication that we are moving beyond just what we have been 
given. I'd like to, to tell you a story, and this is uh, taken from, I heard this a number of different ways, and I'm, I'm assuming that I'm not the only one that has heard this, but I'm uh, currently reading a book, um, and the title's very simple, Think Ahead. It's a very, very good book. Uh, written by Craig Grishel, and, and it's the thought process of, so, well, I, I'm not going to go into that. So we often, I run into this thing, and I, I do personally, and I'm sure that you do as well. We think, well, what am I doing in this station in life? I'm kind of old, gray-headed, and what, what is it that I can do? You know, is it just getting up in the morning, going to work, or is there something else that should be? What is God actually wanting from me? So this story, I'm going to read some, and then I'm going to just talk a little bit. Linda Wilson Allen was featured in a front page article in the San Francisco Chronicle. Who is she? A celebrity? A celebrity or a politician? No, she's a bus driver. And. A reporter for the Chronicle, the, the San Francisco Chronicle, uh, was on the bus every day. And he was confused by what was happening because Linda knew all the regulars, called them by name. She waited on them if they were running late and not at the stop when she got there. And one day, he watched as Linda got off the bus to help an elderly woman who was struggling with heavy grocery bags, and he thought to himself, that's not what bus drivers do. They can't get on the bus. We're just whoosh, go down the road, get out of the way, let's go. But he watched. One day, Linda discovered a woman who was new in town. She invited her over for Thanksgiving. This is a bus driver. He thought, no one does that. He watched her day after day, and as Linda loved and blessed and served people exactly as they needed. We're talking about a lowly, what could be considered a lowly bus driver. And I'm saying this because all of us have a spot in life, a spot where you can serve. The journalist requested an interview and asked Linda to explain how she was able to consistently have such a loving attitude, and he wrote in the article what he learned. She said, and she started early in the morning. Her bus route was early in the morning. She said, I, I like to get up. My mood is set at 2.30 a.m. Uh, I get down on my knees. I like to pray for just roughly 30 minutes. And later on, her, the pastor at her church asked her um, about her prayer time. And, and Linda described how she asked God uh, to show her who he wants her to minister to. It could be someone that's less fortunate than I am. To give them some shoes, he'll show you. That's where kindness comes from. And the pastor asked her then, he said, do you then just quit praying and that's the end of it? She said, no, as I go, I, I like to keep on connecting with God. And, and that keeps me in tune with what's happening around me on the job. Yes, she said, when I'm out there doing my job, ministering, I call it ministering. Most people would call it getting a paycheck. But Linda Wilson Allen considers every interaction an opportunity to be faithful to God by being a blessing to people. And you know what? God calls us to do the very same thing. You don't, you don't drive a bus, perhaps, but we all have something that we do that we do, that, that we, can, we can, how hard is it to send a friend an encouraging text? How hard is it to encourage someone to keep going if life looks dark and not hard at all? This is Christianity at its best, and there was no pulpit involved. There was, were no special titles involved. There, were no, there was no fanfare there was no ordination. There was simply an, an individual that said, God, I'm here. What can I do for your kingdom? I don't know how you, where you revolve and who you talk to. And I, I have opportunity to talk to a lot of people. And I think the, 
The number one concern that, or complaint that I get from within and without the church is the, the complaint that those that profess to be Christian don't really act as Christians should. And the, the, by criticizing others rather than actually living out and holding a hand out, constant criticism, it may give us a dopamine hit to say, well, that group over there, they do that. We do this. We're kind of up here. They're down there. And it's okay to realize that we, there's truth to be lived out. But let me emphasize that faithfulness involves truth lived out, probably more so than spending time criticizing others. Certainly, my, our... our uh, Putting other people down won't put us um, into the category of faithfulness in God's eyes. Now, I'll say this one. I, this, I, this kind of, I had to think this one through, but I heard it. Heard someone say it. Said that. Um, how do you cope with people that come to church late in your church? And this was a person that did not have a church background, and he said, "When I come to church late." They all turn around and stare at me as if I, you know better than that. Just think ahead. He said, when I, get to, when I got to the AA meeting, Alcohol Anonymous meeting, a little late, they all stood up and turned around and clapped because they were afraid I wasn't going to make it. And they're so happy that I'm here. And it just kind of sent a shockwave through me, and I thought, you know what? We can be very, very critical, but we can also... Let's be careful. Let's just, I'll leave that. I think you understand what I'm saying. So what are we doing with our talent? Let's, let's examine, let's review a little bit. Are we building emotional, spiritual muscle? Are we putting in the reps? Are we spending time with God? Because one day we will answer for what God has given us. Are we actively sharing our faith in a kinder, more compassionate way? Or don't we have time to whoever we pass in the store? Again, is God's footprint getting bigger because of your faithfulness? And this is maybe a hard one, but I think an important one for all of us. Are you more respectful or disrespectful to your authority structure that God has placed you in? We show our faithfulness in so many Little things that sometimes we overlook what God is looking at all the time. Let's be honest. <clears throat> Does your level of faithfulness or lack thereof toward God and the church turn people to God or away from God? I think it's good for me to, to stop and think that through very carefully. God has called us to be faithful, not just Sunday morning when we put on our nice Sunday clothes, and I think that's fine. I'm a, I'm a dress-up guy. I like to dress up. That's, that's good. We, we look good, and I think that's good. But God has called us to serve with generosity and humility, and just like Jesus did on an ongoing basis until the very end, until he said it is finished, and he was done. And remember, you are responsible for what God has given you, the opportunities that God has given you. So we can expect one of two things at the end. <clears throat> we can expect to hear, cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness, and we know there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Or we can expect, well done, thou good and faithful servant, Thou hast been faithful over a few things. You know, I, I think maybe sometimes I expect that maybe God will give me about a B minus, but he'll say, okay, yeah, that's okay. And that's the, the human tendency to not even put that in words. And I know I'm sorry that I didn't preach a message of grace, but I will say that, that uh, <clears throat> when we put in effort, this is maybe the unspoken thing in this passage. 
the guy that had two talents instead of five, God still said, well done, thou good and faithful servant. So I think God is not saying that, that all of us have to be a 10 or a 5, but do what you can. And grace comes, and I, I don't know if this is good theology, but in my opinion, grace is activated the moment we put in effort. And maybe even before then, I'm sure it is before then. But at least then, God is saying, you put your effort in, and he will give grace to lead us home. I know it seems a bit cut and dry and harsh, but I think all of us, as we consider what faithfulness really looks like to God, probably understand that there have been times when I had my version of what faithfulness looks like, and God has his version, and he is looking from that perspective. Why don't we bow our heads and have a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, and we pray that you would bless uh, all of us as we share together our journey in the last six months and where we've been. And Father, I, I pray that there would be, uh, your spirit would be active, moving up and down the pews, and, and that you would give all of us um, clarity of mind and, and honesty and, and just a willingness to share. Lord, I pray that you would help us to offer grace to each other, to be kind to each other, and, and help us to grow together and not apart. We need your help, Lord, and we pray against the powers of darkness, and we ask, Lord, that the devil would have no part uh, in his dark works here this morning. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.